Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my very scruffy plot. Work has begun, which is fantastic, and today is another instalment of the kind of winter work series, trying to get back on top of everything, trying to get it looking a bit presentable and get it ready for planting out in spring and summer. So the first thing that I want to get started on today really is sorting out this strawberry bed. This is absolutely by far the weediest bed that I've got on the plot and I'm actually starting to get a bit worried about the strawberries. I mean, I can't see them. <laughs> I'm starting to actually lose the strawberries in here. So I think in terms of prioritization, this is probably quite high up on the list. So let's get stuck into this one. As always, I quite like to do this by hand. Um, I will get the hoe out, I think, but there's just a lot of stuff in here, like the docks, um, which I'm gonna wanna try and get the tap root out of. So I'll do that first with the hands and then get the hoe in. There's mostly dandelions in here that are bad with the tap root. Really difficult to get out. Look at that. Oh, I mean, that's not even that thick a tap root, but they do go deep sometimes. There's so many just dandelion tap roots. I really like it in here. I think this bed is going to be unrecognizable when I'm finished with it. Another reason that I'm using my hands in here is because it's so hard to see the strawberries that, I mean, it would be very easy for me to destroy some of them with a hoe. And also, they might have um, set out some runners uh, and I've lost a few plants in here, so it would be nice if I can cultivate those runners instead of chopping them up with a hoe. <laughs> I must admit, I feel a bit stupid, but there's just such a smile on my face. There's something about working at this time of year, kind of in the cold and, ah, oh, you kind of warm yourself up and just the smell of the dirt and, Earth. It's just really nice, really nice to be out. Nearly done, it's so satisfying. Just a few little more bits around the edges, but importantly, we can actually see the strawberries now. We can see that they're looking pretty healthy as well, which is really nice. Now this is fantastic. This is just what I wanted to see. This is where we had two strawberry plants that actually died back and they weren't doing too well, but you should be able to see from up there that there is a runner that's come all the way from this plant over to here and it's bedded down. Um, so it's quite difficult to get in here with the weeds, but that's really good news and it means we should have a full bed of strawberry plants. I think this is about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. There's still a few little bits here and there, weed-wise, but overall it looks so much better, doesn't it? There we go. I think that's pretty good. There's still one or two little ones, and but there always will be. If you spend, you could spend your whole life weeding one bed, I swear. You're never gonna see them all. But uh, yeah, pretty content to leave it like this. And hopefully now with the weather getting colder and winter drawing in, uh, there shouldn't be too much weed growth. 
and I shouldn't have to do this too many more times before we're into spring. But we'll see. Go on to the next one. Let's have a little look, shall we? Because they're about ready for harvesting now. There's kind of a mixture in here. This is one of the better ones. Not great, considering this is one of the better ones. I mean, it's usable, but not ideal. You win some, you lose some. I think the main cause here is probably the soil nutrient levels and maybe they were planted a little bit close together. I'm not too sure what what has been the main driver behind the, the low yield on here, but um, I'm going to leave them in anyway. You can leave these in right until kind of February, March, still be pulling them up. But they are terribly, <laughs> terribly weedy at the moment, so we just need to tidy this bed up. These big ones are crazy. Hopefully, this is a good little demonstration of why I don't find the hoe always this useful, especially once they've grown up this big because they get so chunky that you can't really cut through them with the hoe and you just get kind of caught up on them. And if you are cutting them off, they're just gonna start regrowing. So I think really, gotta get up up close and personal with your hands. Oh, it's starting to look a lot better. I can get in here with the hoe now. I think, um, I, I've said this before, but just one of the benefits of getting in and weeding with your hands is just that you get to see your plants up close and personal. You know, you get to see, kind of inspect them for disease, look for rust and that kind of thing on here. There's nothing like that that I can see. They are looking pretty shoddy though. They're <laughs> more like spring onions and leeks. <laughs> but yeah, it's starting to look a lot better, isn't it? Oh no, <laughs> I've just flicked this and seeds have gone absolutely everywhere. So I'm gonna take a quick break, harvest this fennel. So let's get to work on this bit of the bed. And I've saved the best till last, which is gonna be ripping out the pack joy, which should be very satisfying. Look at that one. There's a row of small cabbages in here, uh, quite young. They've been really got at by the, the um, slugs, but would have been very easy to forget they were there and go into those with a hoe. What I am gonna do, because a couple of these are double planted, this one's got three in here. I think I'm just gonna pull out the weakest looking one, which is this one here. Just a little bit of thinning out. Uh, I could replant that maybe if I was really feeling precious, but it's fine. <laughs> Jeez. I can see in here as well, because using my hands, there's a couple of cabbage white fly just flying around, landing between the plants. 
and I can't see too much damage or I can't see them on the leaves but it means they're around they're probably laying eggs so you know what that means these are gonna get a spray with neem oil maybe I should have titled this video uh, why I like weeding with my hands because that's mostly what I'm talking about isn't it <laughs> Okay, now it's time for the fun one. I mean, these packs were all completely shot. I can't see a single one that hasn't just bolted and gone completely to flower and seed. Seems a little bit of a shame to get rid of them when they're in flower. I'm a bit of a sap, so maybe I'll leave one or two, but um, I say that this is really fun because, well, it's, it is gonna be satisfying. And also I'm trying to make myself feel better about the fact that this is probably one of the biggest failures to date, I suppose. Uh, I haven't had any crops that have gone completely as wrong as this one. But it's not the end of the world. These things happen and we learn by mistakes. So there we go, just a couple of little jobs so far, but my goodness, it's so satisfying to be able to look over that. It's just, it starts to take the weight off your mind as you uh, you can appreciate just how much better it looks. But we are starting to lose light. Someone just across the way has started a fire, which means I think I'm gonna turn my attention to a different part of the plot. Now you might remember this lot from much earlier in the year when I was dismantling a lot of pallets and asking myself the question of whether or not I was going to have a lot of raised beds in the allotment and well, probably the main thing that stopped me to be honest was just how unsuccessful I was with these pallets how many of them absolutely just broke and turned to rubbish and uh, how much effort and time it took to actually get them apart in the first place. So I've had this big old pile of wood over here for a long time. And as I said the other episode, I was waiting for the skip, but uh, the skips aren't coming this year. So time to get a bit more hands on with it. Now, don't get me wrong, this part of the plot isn't gonna miraculously look 10 times better because Unfortunately, there's still a lot of other little bits of rubbish underneath this and underneath that wheelbarrow that I've kind of hidden away. So we won't focus on that. We'll just have a very nice fire. Now this might be a little bit of a challenge because of how wet this stuff is, but I think we should be able to get something working.
So there we go, folks. I can't lie, that was one of the more difficult fires I've got going. I didn't really have any kindling and it was all pretty wet. So it took a little while and a lot of blowing, but we got there. It's looking pretty good now, so I'm gonna sit back, relax, enjoy one of these, <laughs> and just enjoy. It's quite a nice way to spend a Friday evening in lockdown, I think. There's nothing more satisfying for me. I think I just it's just perfect. Sitting by a fire, it just makes me so happy. But anyway, really happy with what we got done today. Again, it's only a little bit. I'm just kind of chipping away at it bit by bit. I think it's going to be a bit of a bit of a series, really. Over winter, these are going to be the kind of episodes that I'm releasing. Just plugging away, getting everything ready for spring, getting it all weeded and kind of prepared and ready. And I think, if anything, it's probably the part of having an allotment I enjoy the most. This stuff is just so cool. It's kind of what it's all about to me. I love getting really physical and digging everything over and getting it all ready. Um, it's so satisfying to be able to look at just, you know, even just the beds that we've done today, you know, being able to look back over that and see what you've done. It's fantastic. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I know I've enjoyed filming it. Like I say, it's been brilliant. If you have, please do all the usual YouTube stuff. Like and subscribe. Let me know. Comment as well. Tell me what you're enjoying this time of year and what you're not enjoying so much. You know, do you like this winter prep kind of stuff? Maybe you've done all yours already because you're a lot more prepared than me. Um, but yeah, let me know. As always, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you stay safe. I hope lockdown isn't too taxing for you. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. Cheers. That's so good.